All right, Schmoville, very excited here, super excited here. You know, I want to say this about our, our guest here. This is a guy that is true to his word, and I'll mm -hmm. tell you why. Because about a year and a half ago, Josh McCuga interviewed this guy, right? And he, yeah. said, and he said to him, hey, you know, Schmoes, no. And, and our guest was like, no, I know the show. He's like, oh, you got to do the show. And he's like, I will. So we followed up on it. We, said, we followed up a few times. We sure did. Our fans <laughs> followed up on it as well. And we said, he's got to do it. He's got to do it. And he said, when I get closer to my movie, I promise you I will. Well, guess what? The movie's coming out. It's Jurassic World. It's Yay. Colin Trevorrow, the director of the movie. And we have him here. Colin, how are you? What's up? Oh, awesome. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. We made it. <laughs> we finally. finally did. I've been waiting for this interview for a long time. And really the first question I wanted to ask you is a question that it's fun to talk about at bars or wherever you might be with anybody of our generation is the first time that Colin Trevorrow saw Jurassic Park. What was that experience like for you? I was 16 years old and I thought I had everything figured out. <laughs> and I was a little cynical and I was thinking about girls and I wasn't really in the headspace. Uh, and I knew this movie was coming out. My buddy worked at the movie theater, at uh, the Grand Lake Theater, which is this beautiful old movie palace uh, in Oakland, California. And he was the guy who did the popcorn. And he called me up and he said, we're going to watch Jurassic Park uh, at midnight the night before. And it's just going to be you and me. You can sit in the theater alone. you got to get down here at midnight. And I, at the time, I was grounded by my parents. I, <laughs> the only way to punish me was to, uh, to say I couldn't see movies. So I was grounded from seeing movies. And so I snuck out of the house and I like I put the pillows underneath the uh, the, the covers, like all that cliche sneak out of the stuff, like Tom Sawyer stuff that you do. Ferris Bueller, and I, yeah. Like I roll, like I put the car in neutral and like rolled it down the hill, and it was like I, I, I wasn't, you know, that was me defying my parents on this colossal level. Uh, and we went down and we watched this movie, and and you know it was the first time that I had heard uh, digital sound. Uh, so they had this big train. Uh, remember that opening? They used to, I don't know if that kind of predate you guys are younger than me, but they used to have this huge steam train uh, that would show, that would move around the theater on the screen and show you that you had surround sound. And that was mind blowing to like just, just off the top. Uh, and, you know, we were seeing a movie alone in a the theater. Like there's no people, there's no bodies and clothing to take up that sound to absorb it. So it was just the most thunderous, you know, teeth rattling. Uh, performance of Jurassic Park and uh, what it did teach me at that age uh, was that even though I, I did feel like I, I had it all figured out and I knew how things worked that a, a movie like that can regress you to uh, to being an eight-year-old uh, no matter how old you are uh, and so that that became the goal that in, that informed what I'm trying to do with uh, with Jurassic World. So did you feel like an eight-year-old again when you were asked to do this job? <laughs> No, no. Then I, I felt like I rapidly aged like a president. <laughs> it, it, it was in moments, and my, my, my gray beard appeared magically uh, out of thin air. And uh, no, I, I, it's weird. I, 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 I had to kind of, you know, go to my wife and, and say, look, like this is, this is going to be uh, an endeavor that is going to take a piece of my soul uh, and I hope you're willing to part with uh, with it because I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be an empty shell of a man when it's finished not because it's going to be hard uh, which obviously it is but because I, I knew to make this uh, to make this worthy uh, you know I am I am a fan too obviously to make it worthy I I had to I had to give it everything I had and, and I really did uh, so then you know if you now as you see pictures of me I look a little more pale, a little more gaunt. It's because part of my soul is, is now missing. Well, it's you know, it's funny that you say everything that you said in there too, and especially with the. Um how this movie like the look the first one like you said it, it was monumental to, to film in general and to generations and two and three you know some people not not the biggest fans so the the, the re a reboot it, oh, not a reboot but a, a sequel it seems like it's more of a sequel to the first one and like you said it is a daunting task to take over this franchise and you're essentially from what it looks like breathing brand new life into this too so is it, it, is that does that go into it when you decide yeah I'm doing Jurassic World it's because it's this big big movie that you loved but because you can you can be the guy responsible for bringing it back yeah well it's sort of I mean yeah and yet the the biggest fear for me immediately was I can't make a fan film uh, you know I, I can't do something that's derivative uh, and and yet I also have to strike a balance because I I, I, I want to bring back pieces and have things that are familiar uh, to people who love the franchise and 
So really the only way to do that for me was to try to bring back the feeling of watching a Jurassic Park movie without literally showing you that many of, of the familiar images. Even though we do have them, they put most of the familiar images in the trailer uh, in order to make you feel like it's the same kind of film. It's a very different film. Uh, and, and it goes to some, some pretty new places. Uh, and, you know, I, I, the, the only thing that I can compare it to is, you know, when you go back to your old uh, elementary school, your old high school, uh, and you walk around and, and, you know, you touch the lockers and you feel the railings and you have <laughs> a certain kind of sentimental feeling uh, that's related to a place. Uh, that, and yet you, then you see your old teacher uh, and that's a different kind of sentimental feeling. It sort of reminds you like, oh, wait, no, I'm growing old too. And now I'm sad. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, like, I, I wanted to, I wanted to take us back to a place, uh, and by, by making a movie that that hopefully just, uh, you know, gives you that kind of exhilaration and fear and wonder, and and takes you on a journey uh, with characters that you care about. These are the things that made it Jurassic Park, and. I don't think we have to pretend that there weren't uh, diminishing returns, yeah. you know, for the audience with the later films, and and part of that, uh, in my opinion, if we're, you know, hey, since it's just you and me here, <laughs> and we're being honest, uh, you know, part of that is is that it it had a different equation than uh, the first film. The equation of the first film was we're going to take you to a place that is full of wonder and awe and magic and surprise you're going to die. <laughs> and, and then the equation of the second two films is you're going to a really dangerous place. And sure enough, it is, <laughs> you know, and, and, and so we had a privilege. It was, we had, uh, it was a great gift for us to go back to that first equation because we, because it works. And so to just build off of that and then say, all right, well now how, how do we, uh, how do we show people something new? And, and our idea was, well, let's, let's start with, you know, nobody's impressed by a dinosaur anymore. Uh, because nobody is. Now uh, we've seen that visual effect. We've seen we've seen dinosaurs, uh, and so we start in that world. We start in the world basically that we all live in now, and the way we look at these films, and try to push forward from there. Well, you know, I'm going to run with this high school metaphor you brought up because you mentioned teacher, and there's some familiarity in front of the camera and also behind the camera. The perceptive fellow that I am, I noticed one of the executive producers of this movie is a guy named Steven Spielberg. So, <laughs> yeah. Steven Spielberg is, how involved is he in the filmmaking process, in the storytelling process for Jurassic World? And how does that weigh differently on you being the filmmaker that, again, like you said, when you were 16 years old, this guy made a movie that blew you away. So what's it like to have that guy looking over your shoulder making the new one? Uh, you know, he was never literally looking over my shoulder, and that would have been uh, anxiety-inducing if that happened. <laughs> You're going to know him. Yeah, that didn't happen. But he uh, he was there uh, really in the beginning and the end. If, if movies are, are are three parts, if it's you know if it's if it's presentation and then execution and then you know handing handing it over, uh, you know display plating the dish. Uh, did, it, did I lose you? No, oh, we're here. Yeah. We got you. No, I'm getting a phone call, but he, he's, I'm going to roll this guy. We're going to Hollywood this guy. Yeah. <laughs> it was Spielberg. Yeah, it was the Spielberg. <laughs> if that was Steven, yeah. please. It's a huge deal. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Steven the schmoes are on the other line, and yeah. you'll get to him as soon as you yeah, can. Spielberg just got schmoed. <laughs> schmoed. Uh, so, so he was there while we were writing, while we were conceiving of the movie and trying to build something that uh you know that could answer the question like why why is jurassic park for that was what we would ask each other um and uh through the process of of uh you know when we had these story conversations so we would have i don't know if you guys you guys ever read those transcripts of steven and kazan and, and george yeah, Lucas yeah, yeah. all yes. sitting together talking okay so we i have transcripts and this is like one of my prized possessions uh i have i have these transcripts of me and Derek connelly and Steven Spielberg, uh, and at the time, uh, David Kep was sitting in on some of the calls just because wow. he had written the other films, and he's you know he knows a lot about <sighs> Jurassic Park movies, and, and he'll be the first one to tell you like every Jurassic Park movie is a remake. <laughs> and, like, Jesus, that's both like really wise and really daunting all at once. Uh, but so we would have these these long long story conversations, and then uh, we worked on the script. You know, we wrote the, we wrote the first draft in three weeks because we thought. We were gonna. We were having to make the film for the summer of 2014, mm. uh, and and uh, that was a. It was. It was. There's no way to make a movie, uh, and so we wrote it. And Stephen read it and felt, you know what? Like, 
this could actually be could be pretty great. And so let's take an extra year and and really really go for it. And I, I think we we found something that that could could make could really make something that was new. And so that was the gift. I mean, the 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 gift was not giving me the movie. The gift was giving me an additional year to make the movie. Well, uh, and he's one of the only people who can do that. I was about to schmo you just then. Um, <laughs> I remember seeing Safety Not Guaranteed at Sundance and it blew me away. And a lot of people talk about the differences between indie films and blockbusters. But when it came to filming this movie, how did it feel? Did it feel like a big studio movie or did it feel more independent when you're just dealing with the actors? Uh, it, it felt, the times where it felt like a big studio movie was mostly at lunch because they would have <laughs> like, I mean, you could get steak or lobster and that was a choice or a combination <laughs> uh, and that like that is unheard of like we just had like turkey slices and like pirate booty on, on safety not guaranteed and, and you felt the difference there but when you're making a film in the end and i'm sure all of you have you know have made films and and it's a there are a series of concentric circles that move out from the center but that center is just a director and a screenplay and actors and a cinematographer and that circle is equally small on a big movie or a small movie, and it's just a group of people trying to make something feel real. Well, you know, and you had said that too. What, what you notice um, from doing from doing Safety Not Guaranteed, and then getting the, the opportunity to do Jurassic World, seen, and and Gareth Edwards just had this opportunity from Monsters into Godzilla, and it's it's refreshing to see guys like yourself and Gareth getting the, this opportunity too. And I, there's a lot of time. I, mean, I don't know because I'm not, I'm not doing the doing the filmmaking, and I, I can't imagine how much of it you could actually talk about too but how much of the studio do you have not just Spielberg but the studio itself saying you know how much notes sometimes that you're going to wind up getting being someone hasn't done the big studio film yet so did, were you worried about that going in how much studio notes you were going to get uh, I was going in um, the the truth of the matter on this movie uh, is that I, I did not get any studio notes on this movie wow. huh. uh, and uh, we didn't test this movie uh, we, we the all of the things, all of the nightmarish stories you hear, uh, didn't happen on this one. Wow. Uh, we are releasing my director's cut all around the world, and and I don't know if that's wise. Uh, I don't know. I, the, the level of creative freedom that I was given uh, I, was probably based on two factors. One is that Stephen uh, is who I answer to, and hmm. so. And they, what they want is a movie that works. And, you know, studios tend to work in ones and zeros. Either the movie works and it's a win, or it doesn't and it's a loss. And they were watching the dailies, they had read the script, they saw the first cut, and at every stage, it was working in a way for them that they knew they had something that, that was going to do what it needed to do. And so, you know, and this is, I'm being very candid here, but in certain situations, the level of quality of a movie is kind of a coincidence. Uh, if a movie's you know, a movie doesn't have to be spectacular, it just has to to work on the right. level that it needs to work in order for them to make the money. And it makes them sound like very cynical people, and they're not. They're actually people who are genuinely wanting to make something great and very creative. But when you provide them something that's working, they do back off. Like there, there's not a there's not a side of them that just wants to be involved for the sake of being involved. They just want it to work. Right. Um, so I, I, I got a lot of freedom. Now, it doesn't mean I didn't get notes from Steven. Right. Uh, I did. And, and uh, you know, he, uh, he has been doing this for a long time. And as a result, you know, I was able to... Remember that guy on Heroes that could, like, take the superpowers of all the other yeah, people yeah. and put yeah. them into his brain? Yeah. Like, I kind of got to be that guy and just, you know, take everything he's learned over 30 years of being, like, the greatest there ever was and try to, like, take all of those superpowers and... and plant them in my brain and utilize them and uh, I that that was a that was a gift but uh, you know what you're seeing is, is a true collaboration between me and, and Derek Connolly and Steven and there are two uh, very different generational points of view uh, at work in this movie uh, and and what they have done together hey I just saw a bus with our movie on the side of it Yay. <laughs> I'm not used to that I'm sorry I'm so you should cool. honk at the bus tell everybody riding the bus that's, that that's your movie <laughs> it is so weird I don't I haven't been I've been on I've been going around the world on this uh, this press tour and uh, I'm just back in Los Angeles this is my first day back and I'm driving around and seeing these posters all over I just saw a Mosasaurus 
the size of a building. Wow. Uh, and, like, they just will not stop until everyone on the planet knows this movie is available. They well, just yeah. Relax. Well, you know, and you say that, Colin, too, because this is, I mean, like you, like you said before, with, with the, the fact that this movie is coming out and because people are so excited that this could be uh, the, the, the return to what was great about Jurassic Park in the first place, this thing's going to crush. We know it's going to be great. And when it does, you're, I mean, because I've read an interview to where you said you don't really necessarily want to do another sequel to Jurassic World. And if that's, if that's incorrect, please correct me. But, uh, but if that's the case, and when this thing blows up, you're going to be seeing a lot of your movies all over buses. If that's, in, in fact, you want to go after blockbusters again. Is that the road? Are we going to see you directing Star Wars now that you got it in? <laughs> I don't know about that. But I, I mean, look, I mean, first of all, I, I need to... I have been doing this uh, for such a short period of time that I'm still the guy who's like, oh, my God, there's free pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I, I and certainly, like, you know, the seeing the stuff on the side of the bus is very, you know, in, in all the movies where, where the guys, you know, the band finally makes it and they're in the record store and the, the girl runs in and says, your song's on the radio, and they go out and sit in the Chevy. And listen to, <laughs> I, I, I am at that point right now, and so and I want to cherish every moment of it. Uh, my, you're right that I'm I'm not planning to do the sequel, even though I, I I'll definitely want to be involved because I I want to I do care about this and I, I want to make sure it, it stays uh, it stays something that is viable. Um, but uh, that's in the end, like I can give you a bunch of different reasons. In the end, it's because I this experience was so positive, uh, and I and I love this movie, uh, and I I put everything I could ever possibly want to see in a dinosaur movie into this movie. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I feel like I, I was given. Um, oh man, again, let's get let's get reflective here on Schmo's no for a second. I was I was given an opportunity that uh, is certainly unique and uh, not unprecedented, but unique uh, in in film uh, is to take someone from their first film and and skip five movies in between and give them the movie they should have been directing twenty years later. Uh, and I feel a little bit like uh, I'm obligated to make some of those movies that should have happened in between. I love uh, listening to you talk because, I mean, this is the biggest move, one of the biggest movies of the year, and you sound like the bass player from that thing you do. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> happy <laughs> to be here. And, you know, because one of the things that I get just from talking to you in the brief time we've had so far is that you have a great sense of humor, and that was one of the things, I mean, besides the dinosaurs, that made the first movie work so well is the hiring of Chris Pratt in a role like this, is taking his comedic sensibilities and the action chops he proved with Guardians of the Galaxy. Is he just the perfect guy for the world that you're creating he is i think you'll be surprised you know a lot of people are going to be surprised about what this movie is actually like and uh you know the, the trailers of this movie uh they show a lot of badass dinosaur action and that stuff's all in the movie uh but it isn't it doesn't necessarily represent the tone of the film uh the movie is very warm it's very funny it's very emotional uh, it's romantic, uh, and it's scary as hell, and it, it is an adventure. Uh, and so I think that when people see the balance, uh, and also the fact that it's not just Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt is not uh, this comedic lead that everyone is there to support. Uh, the lead of the movie, the, the main character of the movie, in my opinion, is, is Bryce Dallas Howard. Hmm. Uh, Chris Pratt is, uh, is incredible in the film, and he's obviously a co-lead with her. Everybody, Jake Johnson is hilarious in the movie. Everybody gets their own moment. Uh, it is an ensemble, and it's an ensemble that, that Chris Pratt manages to, uh, to anchor uh, by having become a giant movie star. But remember, when I cast this movie, I cast all the best character actors that were available. One mm. of them happened to go on and become a giant movie star. <laughs> oh, wow. That's not a bad thing for us, but Jurassic Park movies were ensemble films. Yeah. And, uh, and this one is, too. Uh, man, it's just everywhere. I mean, there is again. I'm driving. This is ridiculous. You have to get used to it. Uh, it's so awesome. I'm sorry. No, it's don't be sorry everywhere. at all. And then when the uh, film comes out, are you going to be someone that reads the reviews, or will you stay away from everything? No, I will. You know, it's I've I've I've, I've I know what our critical reaction is in Europe already because we get we get the uh, the reaction. So I know what France, Germany, and the UK uh, have to say about the film. Uh, so I'm, I feel very good right now about how people okay. are going to react to it here. I, I, I think we have a good movie. I know we have a good movie. Um, and we'll see if, you know, we'll see how people process it in America. I, I do read reviews just because, unfortunately, as a movie fan, when I look at the aggregate, 
uh, I tend to feel that my opinion of a, of a movie tends to fall within about 10% of the aggregate uh, or the median, uh, you know, the Rotten Tomatoes or the Metacritic, wherever it is. And I, that happens so consistently that I feel like whatever the aggregate on this movie is, uh, is, is going to be a reality of how close I got to what I was attempting. Right. Uh, and I will, I will face that and I will accept whatever it is. Um, I, I have my own opinion as to where this landed as far as what I was trying to do and what we accomplished. And I feel like we, we accomplished what I was trying to do and I had very, uh, a very lofty ambition. Uh, I, I tried to do something that I, that is is pretty bold and and you know could technically be could theoretically be terrible because I guess you know my favorite movies are the ones that could be horrible or could have been horrible. Uh, and I think Safety Not Guaranteed is one of those. If someone tells you what that's about, <laughs> yeah. it's like oh god, really? <laughs> right. Uh, and then you know Star Wars. Like somebody you never heard of Star Wars. Someone's like, all right, there's this guy who can do magic. His dad could do magic, but he's part robot. And then there's a space <laughs> pilot who's got a dog for a friend. And then you're like, what are you talking about? But Star Wars is awesome. Uh, you know, you bring, and you bring up Star Wars a lot, man. Uh, and I, know, I, I think it's one to one. one. I'm Wars keeping kid. score. I, I can't yeah, help it. It's, it's not right like now. a hint or anything. I know. I'm a Star Wars kid. I, 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 have, I, have no, uh, I have no way around it. There's like three Star Wars references and safety not guaranteed. It's embarrassing. Yeah, I, I love it, and I and hopefully yeah, uh, you know, come down the line because all these rumors now with the with the Obi Wan movie and all that stuff too. Maybe there's a there's an opening after Jurassic, <laughs> Jurassic World, and next time you call him, we'll be talking to the and one of the anthology directors as well. But um, you know, one of the things I wanted to ask you before we let you go here is, the, I've I've heard a little bit of the score, and with what because everyone's kind of said that Michael Giacchino's been like a prodigy of John Williams, and just just hearing the mixture of what he because I love Giacchino and what he does in everything, even the last Apes movie, and now you you. Hear hear the, the samples that I've heard so far from the film, did you, like, did, did Steven bring him on board or were you able, were you kind of instrumental in bringing him on? How did Michael get involved in the, in the movie? That was, I, that was an insistence of mine and that's something I fought very hard for wow. and it, we didn't necessarily even have it in the budget because he records with a full live orchestra and it gets very expensive and, uh, and I, I had to, uh, I had to make sure that, that the score was on the level. And, you know, I mean, these part of a big part of Jurassic Park is that music. And if we were going to do something that could even uh, come close to recapturing that feeling, uh, we weren't going to get there by just repeating the John Williams music. It's, that's kind of cheating a little bit uh, for me because, you know, it, it is, it's so indelible and, and so beautiful. And we do use it in the film and, and we use it at crucial moments that I think are very effective. But... I found like I wanted to I wanted to throw him the same challenge that it had been thrown to me of you know here you are you need to now you know you're standing on the shoulder of giants as they said in the first film you know <laughs> what can you what can you do uh to what how can we make a Jurassic Park film score that is for this new generation that belongs to them that they can feel the same kind of ownership over that we felt over over Jurassic Park and oh man did he do it I mean Oh my God! Yeah, what I've heard the is incredible. Score for this movie is incredible. I I incredible. love the comparison by the guy directing Jurassic World saying that you you spent so much time wondering if you could that you stopped didn't stop to think if you should. But it sounds like you guys took your time with this movie from start to finish. So I guess my last question for you is if it, because you were 16 years old when you got your socks blown off by Jurassic Park, what do you say yeah. to all the kids that are going to be seeing this movie in a theater and they're just going to get a whole new world open to them and they want to go into filmmaking? What is the one one piece of advice that you would give them? Uh, you know, I will. I, mean, I hope there'll be a split. I hope some of them will become scientists and paleontologists, <laughs> and, and then the other ones will. Because look, there's only you know, you, you make a gamble with your life. I don't gamble with my money because I gambled with my life <laughs> by, by going into to any kind of creative art. Uh, and I would say to anyone who who chooses that is one really be sure that that is what you want to do because it is not uh, an easy path uh, and uh, i am not an overnight success i have i have been writing screenplays uh relentlessly since i was in college uh and and i i worked very very hard to to reach that point and, and it takes a level of of tenacity uh that maybe not everyone's willing to give uh and and shouldn't be and there's so much rejection and so in order to be willing to go into to this field, know you want it, and then and then once you do, just just follow your instincts because those 
those will be what define you. Um, I, 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 there is a quote, and I don't know who said it, but it's about jazz uh, music, and it might have been Miles Davis. I should, I should find out who said it, but it was that you know uh, the difference between a good musician can play what he thinks, but the difference between a good one and a great one is what he thinks. Well, uh, and if, if you're going to be a creative, it, in the end, it, it's what you think. And so uh, follow your instincts, and the rest will will take you uh, where you deserve to go. Well, the movie is Jurassic World. It is out tomorrow, kids. Check <laughs> it out. Make sure you check out Jurassic World. Colin, thank you so much for joining us and for being a man of your word and coming in and joining and being part of Schmallville tonight. All right, guys. Thanks. Thank My you pleasure. so much. Thank you.